The Birmingham Bowl is a battle between two teams that have been so good that their coaches got stolen from them. Troy will be facing off against Duke, where the Trojans head coach John Summerall left to take the job at Tulane after going 23-4 and over the last two years with the Trojans, including back-to-back Sun Belt titles, while Duke's Mike Elko left to take the job at Texas A&M after going 16-9 these last two years with the Blue Devils, including a nine-win season last year and a seven-win season this year, despite battling tons of injuries. So the question now is who is going to win this game with an interim head coach and start their new era off on a high? That's the question we're going to answer today. So welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, guys. We're so glad you could join us today. Ready to break down the Birmingham Bowl between 11-2 Troy and 7-5 Duke. As always, please continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and check out everything down in the description below, including our holiday special, our expert picks over on the gridironexpert.com. One of the lowest prices in the entire country, guys, and you will get every single college football bowl game spread pick and every single NFL playoff game spread pick. Picks that are hitting over 60% this year, over 65% in our best bet section. We want you to win big with us. We want you to sign up and become a member of our GE Nation. No other site will offer picks like this. No other site will offer them for as low as a price like this. Go take advantage of it and join our GE Nation today. So let's take a look, guys. Troy and Duke. I liked this matchup before all the coaching changes. We knew Elko was going to be gone. We didn't know Summerall was going to go to Tulane uh, until just recently. This was a really intriguing matchup for me, though. Uh, An opportunity for Troy to get their second straight 12-win season uh, and for Duke to get yet another bowl win and, again, start the new era off on a high. You take a look at the offenses. We'll start with both here. We'll start with Troy. Uh, I love it. Troy's offense has been really, really good and really, really efficient. 267 passing yards per game, 159 rushing yards per game. A major reason for Troy's success over the last few years has not only been uh, because of the balance and the system put in place, but the veteran leadership we have seen from a guy like Gunnar Watson, their quarterback, who's thrown for over 3,300 yards and 27 touchdowns to just five interceptions takes great care of the football, and also a star running back like Kamani Vidal as well, over 1,500 yards and 14 touchdowns. That quarterback running back duo, to me, is one of the best in the country, but they're not getting talked about nearly enough because they play for Troy in the Sun Belt. That's why. These two guys are putting up these type of numbers and playing this good of football at a power five school. We're talking a lot about them, but Watson and Vidal deserve a lot of credit, a lot of respect. Nine of the 11 victories that Troy has this year have come by double digits. They have dominated this year. They have no really team has really come close to them. The only exceptions, uh, the only two losses they have was a narrow loss to James Madison and a blowout loss to Kansas State in one of those bye games. I mean, Troy's been playing really, really good football. They've got four wide receivers that have at least 400 reception yards. They are not short of weapons, guys. So this is a Troy team that despite the loss of John Summerall, is still going to be amped. They're still going to be ready to go and ready to clinch their second straight 12-win season. Duke, on the other hand, They've got so many issues going on. This has been a a Duke team that, to me, is a lot better than their record shows, right? If Riley Leonard stays healthy all year long and everybody else stays healthy all year long, Duke's not 7-5. They might have another 8-9 win season right now. I truly believe that. Injuries have just plagued the Blue Devils, and now the transfer portal is plaguing them entering their bowl game. Riley Leonard battled injuries all year. He's transferring, obviously not going to play in this game. Their top two running backs in Jordan Waters and Jaquez Moore are going to be out. Those two guys combined for over 1,300 yards and 18 touchdowns. That's a concern. If you include Riley Leonard, Duke is now down their starting quarterback and their top three rushers. So this is a Duke team that's going to turn to Grayson Loftus, who with the injuries to Riley Leonard this year is not a stranger to the field, right? This is not your average backup quarterback. This is a guy that has plenty of experience this season. 823 yards, eight touchdowns, just three interceptions. He went 20 for 37 for 248 yards and two touchdowns in their season finale uh, win over Pittsburgh. This is a team that has plenty of experience. He's a guy that has plenty of experience, but with the lack of running backs and with the lack of some big-time pass catchers, a lot of it's going to rest on his shoulders. That's not ideal for anybody. When you take a look at Troy's defense, this is a super, super good defense. It's obviously a concern if you're Grayson Loft. It's a concern if you're Duke. Troy has only given up 306 yards per game. That ranks 15th overall. They have a top 15 defense in the entire country. They've allowed over 24 points just twice this year. One of those was in that game to Kansas State, as to be expected. 
They're giving up just 203 passing yards per game. Just 103 rushing yards per game. And like we said, with Duke down so much talent at the running back position, the run game might not even be, be a factor. This is a Detroit team that might be able just to hone in solely on the pass to, to send the house against Grayson Loftus, force him into mistakes, force him into second, third, and long situations. Troy has 45 sacks on the year. They have forced 21 turnovers, and I think they're going to have enough against Grayson Loftus in this game. I think they're going to have a way uh, at least two or three sacks in this game. I think they're going to force at least one turnover off of him. This defense is hungry. They're ready to go, and they're licking their chops facing a backup quarterback that isn't going to have a lot of weapons at his disposal. Duke, on the other hand, like the offense, they are depleted. They are depleted. The transfer portal, the opt-outs, it's a horrible, horrible thing when it comes to bowl games. I mean, it's hard for, for anybody as an analyst to know who's playing, who's not. Some guys, guys decide to bail out like a day or two before the games. And obviously, these teams are not going to be anywhere like we've seen them in the regular season with so many guys choosing to sit out. Duke going to be down their number three tackler in Dorian Mossy, 61 tackles on the year. They're going to be down their top two sack leaders in R.J. Oban and Aeneas Peebles. They are going to be down a lot of talent up front in that front seven, and that's a concern when you're facing such a dangerous running back in Kamani Vidal. And that's what they've got to do, right? If Duke wants to win this game, you've got to find a way to make Troy one-dimensional. And I think from that, it's stopping the run. Because Gunnar Watson's a heck of a quarterback, no doubt about it. But I think they want to play through the running game. And it's the Troy team that in the Sun Belt Championship against App State just rushed for 233 yards and five touchdowns. Kamani Vidal alone did that. 233 yards and five touchdowns. And Duke right now is giving up 146 rushing yards per game. So if Troy is able to maintain their offensive balance, the Duke defense is going to be in for a very, very long day. Duke, if you want to find a way to win this game, you've got to find a way to take away a strength. And I think your main priority is stopping the run and forcing Gunnar Watson to win the game through the air, which he's more than capable of doing. But at least he's not going to have Vidal to lean on. So what's going to happen, guys? Birmingham Bowl, a classic case of who's more motivated, who has more talent, you know, the usual. It's what we see a lot during bowl season, especially nowadays in college football. Obviously, you have to worry about both teams being without their head coaches. Motivation will play a role there. Will Troy be upset that John Summerall left him? Will they still be as amped for this game as they would have been had he been on the sideline with them? Duke. They've known about Mike Elko for a while. They, it was kind of the writing was on the wall that with as well as he was doing, he was going to leave. So how do both these teams respond to losing their coaches? How does Duke respond to losing so many players? That's major question as we enter uh, this Birmingham Bowl. But ultimately, guys, i got to go with Troy. Yes, they lose some raw, but that's it. Everybody else is there. As of right now, we're not expecting any more opt-outs. We don't know of any more opt-outs, right? Troy's going to be practically at full strength, ready to go with the opportunity to take down a Power 5 team and to clinch a second straight 12-win season, which is absolutely unbelievable regardless of what level of football you're playing at. Duke will struggle with a lot of their offensive firepower gone. They will struggle with some big-time playmakers in their defensive line, their front seven gone. I really don't think Duke's going to be as motivated for this game as Troy will be. So give me the Trojans to win the Birmingham Bowl, to win it by at least a touchdown, and they will clinch their second straight 12-win season and ride off into the sunset, a new era for both these programs, but Troy going to be the one to bring, uh, to carry in a little bit of momentum into 2024. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and of course, check out everything down in the description below, including those holiday specials, our expert picks. Do not miss out on that. It's never too late to sign up. Go sign up. Win big with us today. Every single college football bowl game spread pick, every single playoff NFL playoff game spread pick, we want you to take advantage of that and become a member of our G. E Nation. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert.